What if the concept of deep breathing is actually causing more harm than good? We have been told probably from a young age that we need to be taking deep breaths and this is a healthy thing to do. It helps to increase oxygen absorption and it helps us even chill out if we are in an anxious state. However, what research suggests is this could be quite opposite to how we actually want to optimally breathe. Many of us want to take deep breaths either through the chest or even through the belly and even though belly breathing isn't necessarily inherently bad, there is more of a optimal way to breathe through the diaphragm to actually bring us into a healthier parasympathetic state. If we are trying to force our breath through our belly or through our chest, then this can actually be triggering more of a sympathetic response, which is that fight or flight response. That will make us feel more stressed and more anxious. And even if you're experiencing, for an example, a panic attack, you're likely actually over breathing. And I wanna bring in this concept of over breathing. If we are trying to always take deep breaths, we're trying to force the breath, this is signaling to our body that we're trying to pull in more and more oxygen. This is also signaling to our body that we're ready to take action. We're ready to perform some sort of activity. So if we're just relaxed at a desk or on the couch and we're trying to take deep rapid breaths, this can be causing more harm than good. If we are always focusing on taking deep breaths and this increases more oxygen into our blood, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're increasing the oxygen absorption into our cells. And this is why it's important to understand that there's a healthy balance or we need a healthy balance between carbon dioxide and oxygen in our blood. Many of us think that carbon dioxide is just a waste byproduct. However, there's a much more important role than just that. We need a healthy balance between carbon dioxide and oxygen in our blood. When we have oxygen in our blood, the carbon dioxide is what helps to release the oxygen from the hemoglobin to actually absorb into the cells. So if we are just focusing on taking deep breaths and forceful breaths all the time, then we're just recycling this oxygen in our blood and it's not actually being delivered to our cells. Knowing that oxygen is the number one essential nutrient our body requires to survive, to thrive, to function optimally, then we need to learn how to fundamentally breathe correctly. As the title of this video suggests, Yes, overbreathing can cause many issues. It can cause issues with damaging your red blood cells, damaging your cells in general. This can cause issues to the brain, issues to your lungs, issues to literally all functions of the body simply because we know that oxygen is the number one most important nutrient our body requires. Now you're probably wondering what is the most optimal way to breathe and let's just talk about the muscles of respiration for a second because I mentioned chest breathing, I mentioned belly breathing and I mentioned how belly breathing isn't inherently bad but we have to understand that our muscles of breathing, our muscles of respiration are located in the rib cage, our diaphragm is located in the rib cage, our intercostal muscles which are muscles between our ribs are of course located in the the rib cage. So we need to lear learn and understand how to sure initiate the diaphragmatic breath from the belly, but also how to expand the rib cage circumferentially, meaning in all directions simultaneously. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Now the first thing and the only thing that you're going to need is a rolled up towel or a block from block therapy. And we're just going to get us to feel what it's like to initiate the breath from the diaphragm and then how we can expand this truly into the rib cage. That is step one. When you are ready, position the block or the rolled up towel directly over top of your belly button. Now nice and slow, let's bring yourself over top of the tool and let's just stay up on the elbows initially. Now what I want you to do is breathe in and out through your nose the entire time. As you inhale, I want you to feel your belly starting to rise into the tool. And this is a really good starting point. And if you can't sense this right away, that's okay. This may take a little bit of time. And then as you exhale, 
I want you just to do this nice and gently and just feel the block or the towel sinking deeper within the belly. Now let's try to inhale for four counts and exhale for six counts. This is gonna help increase more of the carbon dioxide in our blood to help us absorb more of the oxygen. Now you might be feeling some sensations here. You might be feeling a little bit of pain and that is totally normal, that is totally okay. But respect your limits. Now as you settle in, you can bring yourself flat to the floor. And I want you to get into a rhythm here. I want you to find that rhythm of inhaling for four counts and exhaling for six counts. And this again is just gonna warm up the tissue in our belly, warm up the diaphragm. So then in the next positions I'm gonna show you, we're gonna be teaching you how to really expand the diaphragm and the rib cage in all directions. So once you spent about three, even up to five minutes in this position, nice and slow, bring your hands on your shoulders and exhale up and off. This next position isn't necessarily a singular position, but I'm gonna show you how to decompress your rib cage. And we're just gonna pick a spot in the side of our ribs. Now grab the rolled up towel or the block, and let's position this either on your right or your left rib cage. And we're going to lay on our side, and wherever the block or the towel is, let's just rest our elbow on the floor, bend the elbow, and rest your head in your hand. Now let's get nice and comfortable. All I want us to start doing now is feeling and sensing some fascia decompression in the rib cage. Our fascia is our connective tissue that holds our body together and our ribs can become very compressed due to the fascia and that's because we have an inability to breathe through the rib cage and our intercostal muscles have started to turn off. So this is going to help to decompress the rib cage and also also wake up the intercostal muscles. So now that you've settled in, just take a couple breaths as I was teaching you before. You're gonna be feeling the belly expand and then get smaller as you exhale. Now what I want you to do, and this is taking it to the next step, is as you inhale, initiate it from the belly, but then start to feel that your rib cage is expanding from the sides, from front to back, and try to even direct the breath into the block or the towel. And this is gonna create a lot of awareness between your mind, your body, and how to expand your breath. Again, you might not get this your first shot, but this is a really good way of teaching ourselves how to breathe through the rib cage and we're gonna be following the same rules and the same principles. We're gonna inhale for four counts and exhale for six counts. Don't force the breath, make it nice, smooth, and slow, breathing in and out through the nose. Now, once you spent about three to five minutes here, you can nice and slow exhale up and off, and you can explore now into different areas of the rib cage to direct your breath there, to decompress the rib cage, and to start waking up the muscles of respiration. Now you may be wondering, how should I just be breathing throughout the day when I'm working at my desk, when I am on the couch, when I'm watching a show, when I'm going for a walk? Well, it's a good question because our breath, our respiration should change when there are more demands on it but we shouldn't be changing our breath just for the intention of changing our breath and taking deep breaths. If you need to take deep breaths because you are weight training or going for a run, because your body requires it, that's normal, that's a good thing. But just throughout the day, these are the tips that I would recommend. Now, number one is we always wanna be breathing in and out through the nose. There are so many studies on why that is crucial, and I highly recommend reading the book Breath by James Nestor. He gets into a lot of detail with, of course, breathing and everything breathing. Next, we want to exhale longer than we inhale. This is going to increase more of the carbon dioxide in our blood, as I mentioned earlier, which is so crucial for oxygen absorption. Third, we want to be breathing through the diaphragm. Feel the belly and the rib cage expanding simultaneously. So 
For example, breathing in and out through the nose for four seconds, feeling everything rise, then exhaling for six seconds, feeling everything get smaller. And lastly, we don't want to be taking forcefully full breaths. Try to breathe nice and slow and just find this nice cadence with your breath. Bring it to about 75% of your lung capacity and then exhale. But try not to overthink this too much. It's the most natural thing that we do as humans. However, we've just lost this over time. Another powerful way to increase carbon dioxide in your blood is by holding your breath. Now, this seems weird and this sounded weird to me initially too because I thought that's always a bad thing. However, this is teaching us to increase the carbon dioxide into our blood. So this doesn't mean hold your breath with every breath, but spend a few minutes a day exhaling fully and then hold your breath for maybe 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds and do that for a few minutes a day and then that will improve and increase. You're going to notice that you're going to start feeling a lot calmer, that you're going to have more energy levels. Every function in your body in theory should be improving, but make sure that we focus on the breath as number one. There is a reason why it's the number one essential nutrient our body requires and we shouldn't be prioritizing anything else in this hierarchy. It should be our breath. And then, of course, you can start checking off the boxes of nutrition, of what you're drinking, and then exercise, and so on and so forth. That is for another video. However, I hope you enjoyed this video, the concept of breathing and how important and crucial it truly is for optimal health. I'll see you in the next video.